The Pet Milk Program with Silver McGee and Molly. <laughs> Evaporated milk, pet milk, presents Silver McGee and Molly with Bill Thompson, Gail Gordon, Arthur Q. Bryan, Dick LeBrand, and me, Harlow Wilcox. The show is written by Phil Leslie and Keith Fowler and directed by Max Hutto with music by the Kingsman and Billy Mills Orchestra. If all the recipes women collect were laid end to end, they'd probably reach to the moon and back again. But out of them all, only a few are such big favorites that they're used week after week, year after year. Such a recipe is the pet milk recipe of the month for barbecued corn and meatballs. Nothing fancy about it, just the kind of homey, satisfying food that a family doesn't get tired of. Meatballs, tender and juicy, teamed up with good whole kernel corn in barbecue sauce seasoned just right. Boy, oh boy, that's eating. And what makes those meatballs so extra good the family wants them extra often? Pet evaporated milk. If you've never tasted meatballs made the pet milk way, you just don't know how good they can be. So take my advice, and tomorrow get the pet milk recipe of the month for barbecued corn and meatballs. It's being featured right now in grocery stores from coast to coast. Look for the recipe and give your family this pet milk treat of the month soon. <laughs> When a newlywed husband takes his wife to the movies, he brings her home in a taxi. After they've been married a few years, he brings her home in a streetcar. So here, walking home from a matinee, we find Fibber McGee and Molly. Oh, that was a wonderful picture, McGee. I just enjoyed every minute of it. Enjoyed it? My gosh, you cried your eyes out through the whole picture. <laughs> that was the soggiest popcorn I ever tasted. Well, that's the way women are, dearie. We always enjoy a good cry. Well, you must have all been having a picnic today, then. Every dame in the joint was bawling like a calf with its tail caught in a barbed wire fence. <laughs> Some fun. Ah, uh, well, come clean now, dearie. Didn't you ever cry at a movie yourself? Well, once when I was a kid. Well, good. Yep. It was one of them western pictures where some pioneers were caught in a snowstorm in the wilderness and a bunch of wolves came along and ate them all up. Oh, my goodness. No wonder you cried. Those brave people being devoured by wolves. Oh, it wasn't that. I cried because there was one poor skinny little wolf that didn't get himself a pioneer. <laughs> what a lovable child you must have been. Well, I always have had a tender spot for dumb animals. And speaking of dumb animals, look who's coming. For goodness sake, Dr. Gamble. Hello, Doctor. Hello, Molly. And a twitch of the eyebrow to you, bag britches. <laughs> Hi, hello, belly. <laughs> I was just over to your house, Molly. You had an appointment at my office for a checkup this morning. Oh, oh dear, I forgot all about it, Doctor. McGee and I went to the movies. Oh, well, don't worry about it. Can't be much wrong with a woman who's lived with this little monster all these years and managed to survive. That tough talk don't fool me none, Fatso. <laughs> you love me and you know it. Oh, sure. <laughs> to put new words to an old song, like a schoolboy loves geometry, that's how I love you. <laughs> As I was saying to the fellows during the Penny Ante game last night, what a relief. Hey, wait that... a minute, wait a huh? minute. There was a poker game, how come you forgot to call me? We didn't forget, it was purely intentional. <laughs> The way you behaved at the last session made you about as popular as a busted flush. Gosh, I didn't act no different from usual. Exactly. <laughs> what did he do, Doctor? Well, we just have a small game, ten chips for a penny, and this mad plunger said he'd take five chips and pay for them with an I.O.U. <laughs> I was only kidding. We persuaded him to buy a whole nickel's worth, and the game started. Dealer's choice. When it came his turn to deal, he said we'd have a hand of double-breasted Willie in the woodwork. I never heard of that one before. Neither had anybody else. <laughs> According to this half-baked hoil, it's played with all spades wild except the king, which becomes a deuce of hearts if you have a club in your hand, or a, <laughs> or a tray of clubs if you have a diamond in your hand higher than the seven. Also, the red fives count double if you have more black cards than red cards. <laughs> Unless the man on your left has a one-eyed jack. Well, how could you remember 
remember all those rules. We couldn't, so McGee won every time he dealt. <laughs> when the game was over, he discovered that he was short one chip. Value a tenth of a cent. Lock the door, screams Gaylord McGee, the riverboat gambler. I've been robbed. Heavenly days. He insisted that we all strip to the skin so he could search us. <laughs> we picked him up, tossed him out the door, and the missing chip fell from the cuff of his trousers. Well, I can understand why he wasn't invited again. Yes, without McGee, we had a quiet, simple game of penny ante. Nothing was wild, including the players. Goodbye, my dear. <laughs> Goodbye, Doctor. He sure don't let the truth interfere with a good story. You mean he made that up? Why, sure. That ship didn't fall out of my trouser cuff. It fell out of my pocket. <laughs> well, that's different, but no better. Well, now, don't go scolding me, Tootsie. I ain't the one that ought to be ashamed of himself. You're the one of herself. <laughs> me? For what? For not keeping your appointment with Doc. That's for what. My gosh, there just ain't no excuse for not remembering stuff. Oh, all right. So I forgot something, but it doesn't happen very often. Well, it shouldn't never happen. Me, I got a terrific memory. My mind is like a big filing cabinet. If you could look inside my head, you'd see a whole line of long drawers. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like wash day in the wintertime. <laughs> it's nothing to laugh about, kiddo. You ought to be like the... Well, McGee, we've reached our little nest. Oh, yeah. Shall we go inside and let the subject drop? Okay. But it's pretty embarrassing for a fellow like me, which never forgets, to have a wife, which in spite of the example set by her husband, does. Go ahead, dearie. Open the door. I can't. Why not? I forgot to bring my keys. <laughs> we're locked out. Well, well. What were you saying about a terrific memory? Funny, I can't seem to remember. Billy Mills in the orchestra, and I talk to the trees. thing locked out of our own house. Didn't you bring your keys either? I didn't even bring my purse. Oh? I left all those little details to my lord and master with the long drawers in his head. <laughs> what do we do now? Go downtown for dinner, I hope? Oh, no, it ain't that serious, Tootsie. There's ways to get in without a key. Well, name one. Well, we could dig a hole under the house and crawl around till we found a loose board in the floor. <laughs> Forget it, huh? Yes. Mm -hmm. Look, what about the windows? 
I know the front windows are locked, but we could put a ladder against the house and try the upstairs windows on the side. Say, that's a great idea. I was just going to think of that myself. <laughs> well, good. Run and get the ladder out of the garage. Oh, I'm way ahead of you, kiddo. I already done that. When? Week before last when I had the gutters cleaned out. It's laying right down here in the flower bed. Well, good. Well, come on, grab one end of it. All right. I'll get a hold of... No, 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 no. Not the big end of it. That's too heavy for you. You take the little end, Tootsie. Oh, thank you. Yeah. That's thoughtful. There, I've got it. You got the big end? No, a ladder always works better if you leave one end of it on the ground. <laughs> Raise it up. That's it. A little higher. Walk it forward. Easy. Back a little. Left. Right. Now, let it go. There. We got it. Would you care to rest for a minute, McGee? Given all those directions, must have tired you out. No, I feel fine. That's Mother's big, strong boy. Well, up you go. Oh, not me, kiddo. I couldn't. Why not? I got no head for high places. <laughs> Sometimes I even get dizzy when I wake up in the morning and look over the side of the bed for my socks. <laughs> well, now, I'm certainly not going up that ladder. I don't want the whole neighborhood looking at my legs. What's wrong? Are your seams crooked? <laughs> no, they're not, but that doesn't mean I want more Toops or Hector Howell to see him. Oh, why worry about them guys? More Toops' his wife looks like she's walking around on two rayon radishes. <laughs> Hector Howell's wife is so bow-legged she could straddle a barrel without picking up a splinter. <laughs> they wouldn't dare make no cracks about yours. <laughs> well, you certainly build up a girl's ego. Hello, Molly. Hi, pal. Hello, Mr. Wilcox. Hi, Junior. What's with the ladder? Getting ready to paint the house? No. No, we're locked out. I want McGee to climb up and see if that bedroom window's open, but he's afraid of the height. Yeah, I wish we had Uncle Dennis here. He'd do it. The higher he is, the happier he is. <laughs> Well, hey, I'll run up and take a look. Swell, Junior. I'll hold the ladder. Hey, look at him go up. Sorry, Kyle. It's locked. Hey, look at him come down. <laughs> My goodness, Mr. Wilcox, you certainly did that fast. Well, I learned how to climb ladders from the boys in the fire department, Bolly. You should see those boys do it. Yeah, they're great, Junior. Oh. I was over there yesterday having a little coffee with the boys. Real coffee with plenty of pet milk in it. Oh. And the chief said he'd show us how they do a rescue. Yeah, I'd like to have saw that. Daredevil stuff, huh? No, you bet. Wilcox, the chief said to me, yeah. set down your cup of delicious steamy hot coffee. Coffee at its best because it has the beautiful creamy color yeah. and the delightful flavor that pet milk always brings to coffee. Yeah. And come watch how we do a rescue, he said. Farmen always talk like that? In Wilcox's stories, everybody talks like that. <laughs> well, go on, Junior. What happened? Well, the chief grabbed a cup of coffee, sloshed it full of pet, and ran up a ten-story ladder with it. With the coffee in his hand? No, in a cup. <laughs> Too hot to hold in his hand, you see. <laughs> well, anyway... <laughs> anyway, he reached the top, made his rescue, and started down. Boy, I'd like to have saw that. Ah, what a picture. What a picture of skill and daring. Yeah? The fire chief nonchalantly climbing down an 80-foot ladder with a beautiful blonde under one arm and a cup of coffee with pet milk in the other hand. My goodness, down a ladder, no hands. Boy, I'd like to have saw that. <laughs> well, sir, let me tell you. About halfway down, he suddenly hit a spot where the ladders joined, and he had to have one hand free, you see. Boy, I'm afraid to ask what he did, Junior. <laughs> well, he did the only thing possible, of course. Yeah? He dropped the blonde and grabbed the ladder, never still a drop. <laughs> Days. He dropped the girl and held on to the cup of coffee? Why, sure. Any intelligent, able-bodied, red-blooded coffee lover faced with a choice like that, a choice between a beautiful blonde and an even more beautiful cup of coffee, coffee with the handsome, creamy color and the tantalizing flavor that pet evaporated milk gives it, well, gee whiz, anybody would... Uh, am I going a little too far with this? Yes. <laughs> yes, Mr. Wilcox. No, Junior, you can go a little farther. Go home. Okay, so long. Boy, that, that boy's getting a little confused, you know. Well, come on, I'll help you move the ladder over. Mom. Good. Maybe the next window might be open. Oh, easy now, easy now. Watch it. That's it. Easy. There. That's it. 
Now could I persuade you to climb up there, please? I already told you, Molly. I, I can't stand altitude. You remember the time I tried on them elevator shoes and they give me the nosebleed? <laughs> Any kind of height. Just... Hello, daughter. Hi there, Johnny. What's up to, kid? Oh, hi, old timer. We got ourselves locked out of the house. And McGee doesn't want to climb up to the window. Claims it makes him giddy. I'll climb up, daughter. Won't bother me none. I've been giddy all my life. <laughs> oh, you shouldn't, Mr. Old Timer, now that's your age. Oh, I'm still pretty spry, daughter. As I was saying to my girlfriend, Bessie, the other night, Bessie, I says, I'll never see 40 again, but who cares? I already seen it twice. <laughs> Bessie getting along these days. Oh, fine, Johnny. Good. Had a little spat a while back, but now we're cooling like two pigeons full of popcorn. Yeah. <laughs> what was your little spat about? Well, a couple of weeks ago, I took Bessie on a tour of the hot spots. The nightclubs, eh? Nope. Them open gratings in the sidewalks. <laughs> we like to stand over them and feel the hot air come up. <laughs> Sounds real entertaining. Yeah, well, while we were standing there, some soldiers come by, and Bessie made eyes at them, and we had a beef. Oh? Next day, I got to thinking, if Bessie was so crazy about uniforms, I'd get one myself. So I went down to the recruiting office and lied about my age. Yeah, how'd you make out? Fine, Johnny, till I took off my shirt, and there on my chest was tattooed, Remember the Maine. <laughs> you gave up after that. Nope, I kept crying, but he was pretty discouraging. Said soldiers had to march a lot, and then he made a ridiculous request. What was that, old-timer? He said, let me see your legs, Pop. I said, I can't make my legs pop, Buster. Would you like to see my eyes pop? <laughs> suppose you wound up getting classified 4F. Not 4F, Johnny. He gave me a classification all my own. 4B. 4B? Yep. Badly battered, but belligerent. <laughs> the King's Men and Chattanooga Choo Choo. Leaving New York on Track 29, Sunshine Limited. Check your baggage. Bound for Washington, Roanoke, Asheville, Chattanooga. Oh, pardon me, boys. Is this the Chattanooga Choo Choo? Yes, sir. Track 29. Boys, you can give me a shot. Oh, I can afford to board the Chattanooga Choo Choo. I've got my fare, and just a trifle to spare. You leave the Pennsylvania station about a quarter to four. You read a magazine, and then you're in Baltimore. Dinner in the diner. Nothing could be finer than to have your ham and eggs in Carolina. When you hear the whistle blow an eight to the bar, then you know the Tennessee is not very far. Shovel all the calling, gotta keep it rolling. Boo, boo, Chattanooga, there you are. Wildly celebrated Chattanooga situated on the moccasin bend of the Tennessee River. Missionary ridges off the west. 120,000 population. Them's the folks I love the best. Iron and steel are the principal products. Boilers, furniture, cast iron pipe. Many resorts to attract the tourists. You ought to be there when the peaches get ripe. Chattanooga, Chattanooga, Tennessee. That's the place for me. Boy, there's gonna be a certain party at the station. Dressed in satin and lace. I used to call funny face. Oh, she's gonna cry until the tell her they'll never roll. Chattanooga choo choo, won't you choo choo me home? Chattanooga choo choo, Chattanooga choo choo, won't you choo choo me home? Oh. 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 O
Rat the luck. Whoever closed this house up when we left for the movie, you sure locked the windows tight, kiddo. Dead rat, the dead rat. Well, well, well. Practicing to be a burglar, McGee? Hello, Molly. Hello, Mr. Mayor. We're locked out of our house. Yeah, Latrev. We went to a movie this afternoon, and Molly forgot to bring her door key. I forgot to bring his, too. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe I can help you, Molly. How about the back door? Locked. Well, let's go have a look at it. I carry an old-fashioned door key on my ring, sort of a skeleton key. You'd be surprised how many different locks it will open. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> I hope it works. Yeah, where'd you learn about locks, Latriv? You a Yale man, boy? <laughs> <laughs> oh, gee whiz, don't you get it, kids? Yale, Yale locks, Yale universe. Tain't funny, McGee. Tain't? <laughs> I wasn't amused by it. <laughs> As a matter of fact, McGee, if you really want to know, I was educated in England, graduated from Eton College. My gosh, them English have a special college where they just teach that? <laughs> just, just teach what? Eating. You said you graduated from an eating college. I had no idea they specialized like that over there. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid you misunderstood me, Molly. You see, Eton College is a famous English school. Gee whiz, what will they think of next? I've heard of business college and barber college, but <laughs> an Eton college is a new one on me. <laughs> I didn't say I attended an eating college, McGee. I merely said I attended the Eton school. The one and only Eton school. <laughs> it's the only one I've ever heard of. I know that. <laughs> Yeah, me too. What'd you major in, Latrev? Out a car, but a formal dinner? Or did you just go for a straight degree of LLD? Doctor of light lunches. Uh, ju ju just a moment, please. This confusion is really I'll bet bad. you I... were a wonderful student. <laughs> I just bet you were. Honor student, probably. Yeah. How did you graduate? Magna cum and get it? <laughs> yes. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> see your diploma sometime, boy. What's it look like? A cross knife and fork on a saucer of tea with a mutton chop rampant on a field of Yorkshire pudding? <laughs> no, stop it. Of all the stupid, deliberate oh, ways... Oh, now, to... now, now, Mr. Mayor. Temper, temper. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Now, listen, please. I merely said that I attended Eton College in England. E-T-O-N. Eton. E-T-O-N. That's the name of the school. They don't teach eating there. They Boy, they don't teach spelling there, either. E-T-O-N, eating. Did you hear that, Molly? Yeah. A college man, and he can't even spell eating. I'm not trying to yell, Steaton! Spell eating! Beaten! Spell eating! Look! When I said I went to skeet and in England, I didn't mean I skent the wool to earn to leap. Huh? Went to school to burn my feet, to earn the meat, to beat my feet. He, you were the one. It was a... Um, I was... It was... I was... McGee? <laughs> yes, boy? This key of mine works as I thought it would. It unlocks the back door, you see? Oh, good. I can open it, you see? Oh, that's swell, Trev. And I can close it and lock it. Yeah, but uh, you got to leave it unlocked uh, or, or we can't get back in. Uh, yes, I know. <laughs> good day. <laughs> But that isn't a fine attitude. <laughs> Try to be nice to people and yeah, have a nice... Yeah, just because he went to Eaton school, he takes it on the lamb. <laughs> well, I guess I'll just have to bust I the window. I guess you will. Yeah. Might as well be this one here you'll break, I guess. The pantry one. That's a good one. I've got to get inside and start dinner because I can't... Okay, here goes. Oh. Reach in and unlock it now. <clears throat> I got it. Think you can get through there all right? It's a little small. Well, give me a leg up. There. That's it. I'll get my head and shoulders through first. You want me to push? Yeah. I can't get my hips through. Oh, dear, what a tight fit. I'm stuck. I can't go either way. Help, Molly. It's cut my window. I'm trying. Push. Pull. 
No, don't do both at once. Well, I'm trying to help you. Uh, help? Uh, run, get a saw. Get a carpenter. No, get... no, no, no. Took it easy, McGee. Took it easy. <laughs> Who's in there, McGee? It's me, Mrs. Ollie Swenson rides again. <laughs> well, come on. Drag me through here, Ollie. Grab my arms. You know, it's a good thing I'm here, McGee. Easy now. I pull you right on in the pantry here. Now. <laughs> there. That's it. <sighs> Whew. Boy. Thanks a lot, Oli. Open the back door for Molly. Well, hello, Mrs. Come in. It's your house. My goodness, I'm certainly glad you were here, Oli. Sit down, I'll put some coffee on. Well, thanks, Mrs. I used to in to bring back eggs my Mrs. borrowed there on the Sanko there. Oh, that's swell, Oli. And any time you want to borrow anything else, boy, you're welcome to come over here. Hey, wait a minute. How did you get in this house, anyhow? My goodness, I never thought about that. Yeah. That was very simple, McGee. I knock at the front door, nobody answers, so I push it open and holler McGee. Then you holler back help, I come in the pantry, and there you was in the window, stuck like a pig. <laughs> you... You just pushed the front door open? Sure. You should have leave the door unlocked like that, McGee. That's a very careless habit. Oh, careless my clavicle. This is ridiculous. <laughs> Fibber and Molly return in a moment. Ask any good cook who cooks with pet evaporated milk, and she'll tell you that there is no better milk. You'll say so, too, once you discover how many favorite family foods you can make extra delicious and extra nourishing with pet evaporated milk. Whatever you use it in, from cream pies to puddings, from casserole meals to cake frosting, pet milk makes a wonderful and noticeable difference. It's bound to... Because there's a difference in the milk itself. You see, pet milk is actually more than twice as rich as ordinary bottled milk. Because more than half the water has been removed by evaporation. By removing that much water, all the richness, all the natural goodness that's in a full quart of good, sweet country milk is concentrated in just a pint of pet evaporated milk. That's right. Just one pint of pet evaporated milk has the same natural richness and food value as a full quart of good, sweet country milk. So is it any wonder that pet milk is the first choice of good cooks? Make it your first choice, too, next time you go to your grocer's. And any time you can, uh, we can pull you out of a window, all of you just let us know, huh? <laughs> That's okay, McGee. I was just thinking, though. I don't know which way I should tell the fellas at the, the Elks Club, McGee, about that. Well, what do you mean, which way to tell it? Well, I could say it two ways. You yeah. know. You're an American fella, of course. Why, of course, Ole. Uh, well, I, I don't know if I should say I gave a big yolk and pulled a yank through the window, or I give a yank and pulled a big yolk through the window. <laughs> That's a yolk, McGee. Yeah. <laughs> but not when you're the yolk, the yolk's on it, ain't it? <laughs> Good night. Good night, all. The first evaporated milk, Pet Milk, brings you Fiddle McGee and Molly each week at this time. Be with us again next Tuesday night, won't you? Some husbands forget wedding anniversaries. Others remember with a gift. But Jim Carter spends time on his wedding anniversary buying a present for someone else's wife. It all happens in the story of the week next Saturday morning on Pet Milk's Mary Lee Taylor program. Be sure to listen. In addition to a wonderful story, you'll hear the special recipe of the week for a tasty, easy-to-fix, one-dish meal, Frankfurter Corn Bake. Don't miss the story of the week and the recipe of the week on next Saturday morning's Mary Lee Taylor program, coming your way on NBC. Now enjoy the Eddie Cantor Show on NBC. NBC.